In this lesson I'm going to demonstrate how to create distribution groups in Exchange Server 2010. So in the Exchange Management Console under Recipient Configuration there is this Distribution Group section. And we can use this part of the console to create and manage distribution groups. So you can uh, create a new one using the uh, wizard in the Actions pane here or just by right clicking and choosing New Distribution Group. And similar to mailboxes, you can create a distribution group uh, by either creating a new group in Active Directory in the process or for an existing group within Active Directory. So in this case, I'm just going to choose new group. But if you are choosing to uh, create a distribute or mail enable an existing distribution group, uh, just be aware that that group needs to be a universal group and not a global group or a domain uh, local group only universal groups can be used by Exchange 2010 as distribution groups. However, they can be a security or a distribution group. It doesn't really matter. So I'll just leave that on new group and click next. And here I get the opportunity to choose between distribution and security. Now the difference between the two of those is that uh, a distribution group is only used for distributing email, whereas a security group can also be used to grant permissions to resources. So um, you may choose to use security groups so that you get that dual function of, for example, having a sales team that is all a member of a distribution group for emailing purposes called sales team. Um, but because the group is also a security group, you can use that same group to grant them permissions to a sales team mailbox. Now again, uh, similar to creating mailboxes, you get the chance to specify an organizational unit. Um, I'm just going to leave that clear and use the default one at the moment. So now we get the opportunity to give our distribution group a name. And in this case, I'm going to call it Head Office Team and give it an alias of Head Office Team. Spaces aren't valid in aliases, so you can use spaces in your names, but not in your aliases. And the alias is used to generate the SMTP address that will be associated with that distribution group. So there's nothing else to fill out there. We just go ahead and click New, and that group has now been created. So at the moment, what we've got is a new distribution group called Head Office Team. It's actually got no members in it at all at the moment. So let's go ahead and add Alan Reed, and he's now a member of that group. So what I can do now is uh, go into Outlook Web App, and I'm logged on with the administrator account at the moment and send a new email to that head office team distribution group that I've just created. Now let's go over to Alan Reed's mailbox. And we can see that the email has arrived. So back to the server again, let's take a closer look at that distribution group's properties. So here we can see the SMTP address that's been assigned by the email address policy uh, to this distribution group. So what I'm going to do is just copy that And we'll go into Gmail. And I'll try and send an email from the Gmail account to that same distribution group. So that test email from Gmail has actually failed. I've got a uh, non-delivery from Postmaster here, so let's have a closer look 
at what's happened there. So delivery has failed to these recipients. Your message can't be delivered because delivery to this address is restricted. And here in the diagnostic information, you can see a little bit more information where it says auth required, or in other words, authentication required. So why did that happen for that new distribution group? I'll go back to the server and take a look. By default in Exchange 2010, when you create a new distribution group in the organization, has this option here enabled, require that all senders are authenticated. What that means in effect is that an anonymous emailer, which basically is anyone outside the organization sending email in from the internet, is not going to be able to send email to this group. So by default, new distribution groups in Exchange 2010 are secured from receiving external email. And that's a good thing because you don't want uh, people emailing your all staff lists and things like that. So even though the administrator account as an authenticated internal user was still able to email it, a non-authenticated external sender was not able to. So if you have uh, special distribution groups where you need to receive mail from outside the organization, you can just go ahead and clear that checkbox, apply the change, we'll go ahead and test that now. And we'll have a look at Alan's inbox. This time we can see that the test from Gmail came through because the distribution group no longer requires that senders be authenticated. So just be aware when you're creating your Exchange 2010 distribution groups that that option exists and that your groups will be secure by default against receiving mail from outside of the organization.